Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing uh, lipoproteins and lipid transport around the body. Okay, right, so I'd just like to begin this video with a correction to what I said in the previous video. I told you that the uh, diameter of an LDL molecule was around 8 to 11 micrometers, sorry, nanometers, <laughs> 8 to 11 micrometers would be a disaster. Uh, in actual fact, the um, diameter of LDL molecules is actually slightly bigger than that. That's the diameter range for HDL molecules. So the diameter range for LDL molecules is between 20 and 25 nanometers. Okay, so scratch that one out. It is instead 20 to 25 nanometers. Okay, so back to HDL then now. So we're going to finally turn our attention to HDL which stands for high density lipoproteins. Okay, now these have a completely separate function to the other lipoproteins which we have seen examples of. Basically, the function of high density lipoproteins is to go around and mop up cholesterol molecules that are in excess in membranes, basically. And this could be membranes of other lipoproteins, or it could be cell membranes. Okay, right. Uh, so, let's start then with the structure of high-density lipoproteins. So, basically, they are the ones with the diameter between 8 and 11 nanometers. Okay, so they have a diameter between 8 and 11 nanometers. Okay, so they're very, very small little particles. And they will have a phospholipid monolayer, just like all the other um, lipoproteins. And in this phospholipid monolayer, what you will have is apolipoproteins suspended. Okay, and the apolipoproteins that you find suspended within uh, the uh, phospholipid monolayer of high-density lipoproteins are usually apolipoprotein A1. So the main apolipoprotein present within high-density lipoproteins is apolipoprotein A1. However, there are a bunch of other ones which can also be present to a lesser extent. And HDL is the type of lipoprotein which can actually contain the greatest uh, number of different apolipoproteins. So other apolipoproteins that can be present in HDL molecules include the other two ApoAs. So also we have apolipoprotein A2 and apolipoprotein A4. Okay, then we also have uh, the free apolipoprotein Cs. Okay, so apolipoprotein C1, apolipoprotein C2, and apolipoprotein C3. And then finally, we also have apolipoprotein D, and then finally apolipoprotein E. These can also be present within HDL molecules. In fact, the only ones which can't be present are the apolipoprotein Bs. So the absolutely massive ones, which are the apolipoprotein B100, and then to a lesser extent, about half the size, you then have apolipoprotein B48. Those can't be present in these HDL molecules. So you find all the other apolipoproteins other than the B1 present in HDL molecules. Now, so the structure then of these HDL molecules, initially when they are synthesized from the liver, pretty much all you have is this uh, phospholipid monolayer and the apolipoproteins. You don't have anything in this storage. So instead, the way that the HDL actually starts off its life is as a disc, like so. Okay, so here is the phospholipid monolayer, and then obviously suspended within the phospholipid monolayer, we'll have these apolipoproteins, and I think I'll draw two separate ones of these. So HDL is synthesized in the liver, and when it's first synthesized, pretty much you just have the phospholipid monolayer with um, these apolipoproteins in the membrane. Now, importantly, you also have something else within the phospholipid monolayer that you don't have in the other lipoproteins, which is an enzyme. 
Okay, so we need to talk about this special enzyme that you're going to have within the phospholipid monolayer of HDL molecules. Okay, so this special enzyme is called LCAT. Okay, and LCAT stands for the lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase. So the L is for lecithin, and remember, lecithin is another name uh, for phosphatidylcholine. The C is then for cholesterol, okay, so lecithin, cholesterol, and then the A is for acyl, and then the T is for transferase. Okay, right, so this enzyme is basically going to transfer an acyl group from lecithin to cholesterol. Okay, right, so let's sum up what we've got so far. HDL is synthesized by the liver and its structure starts off in this disc shape and by the way this is called a nascent okay or a newly made HDL molecule okay and you could call it an HDL disc if you like a nascent HDL disc okay and at the moment you have nothing in this core uh, you just have the phospholipid monolayer with the apolipoproteins in, which are mainly apolipoprotein A1, but there can be these other forms. And then you have this special enzyme, lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase, also within uh, the phospholipid monolayer. Now, these things are then going to be secreted into the blood, and their job is to go to cells and also uh, to other lipoproteins which have got too much cholesterol in their um, phospholipid bilayers or with their phospholipid monolayers if we're talking about lipoproteins and basically they are going to take the cholesterol from the membranes of uh, either the, those lipoproteins or those cells and they will convert them firstly to cholesterol uh, esters by this enzyme here and then they'll put those cholesterol esters within their core. Okay, so let me show this. So basically, let's say we have some LDL molecule here, or potentially it could be um, a chylomicron remnant as well. So remember, when chylomicrons have given up all of their triacylglycerols to adipocytes and skeletal and cardiac muscle cells, they also become bags of cholesterol. Okay, so it's some lipoprotein, we'll say it's an LDL lipoprotein, okay, uh, that has a very high level of cholesterol within its phospholipid monolayer. Okay, so if it's an LDL protein, then we have this absolutely massive APO uh, B100 apolipoprotein here, which is the only apolipoprotein you have in the LDL uh, phospholipid monolayer. Okay, and then you have lots of these phospholipids, which we'll remember usually be lecithin. Okay, and then you have these cholesterol uh, molecules dotted in amongst the phospholipids. Okay, and let's say it's got a very high uh, amount of cholesterol within its phospholipid monolayer. So I'll put lots of these cholesterol molecules. Basically, what's going to happen is the HDL is going to come over and the lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase is going to work on molecules within the membrane, the phospholipid monolayer of this low-density lipoprotein. Now, what's going to happen? Well, basically, it's going to take a cholesterol molecule. So I'll just draw the structure of cholesterol out here. Okay, so remember cholesterol has this steroid structure where we have these uh, multiple carbon rings added on. And have I left enough space? I don't think I have. I'll have to squeeze this in now. And then we've got this side chain up here. Yeah, that's fine. And then we've got a double bond there, a methyl group there, a methyl group there, and an alcohol group there. So we take a cholesterol molecule, we also take a lecithin molecule, so remember a phosphatidylcholine molecule here, uh, consisting of uh, a phosphatidic acid molecule, consisting of a glycerol molecule and two long chain carboxylic acids with a phosphate group esterified to that glycerol molecule, and then you add a choline molecule onto that phosphatidic acid molecule to create phosphatidyl uh, choline or lecithin as it's also called. So here are the long chain carboxylic acids in orange. Uh, the glycerol molecule is in green. The 
uh, phosphate group is in red here, or vivid purple, and the choline group is in blue. And basically, both of these molecules are within the phospholipid monolayer. This is the main sort of phospholipid you have, and we've got lots of cholesterol. And basically, what the lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase is going to do is it's going to take this long chain carboxylic acid here off the second alcohol group of the glycerol molecule and it's going to transfer it onto the alcohol group of the cholesterol molecule. Okay, so what will that create? Well, it will create a cholesterol ester. So let me draw a cholesterol ester here. So we'll start off again with our cholesterol structure, which are, uh, well, which is these um, four carbon rings joined together, like so, with this seven-membered uh, side chain up here, a double bond there, and two methyl groups, like so. And then off the alcohol group, what we're now going to have is a long chain carboxylic acid. Okay, and the other product you'll then have is a lysophosphatidylcholine molecule, which is phosphatidylcholine with that middle long chain carboxylic acid removed. So we now only have a single long chain carboxylic acid here, uh, bound to our first alcohol group of our glycerol molecule with a phosphate group still coming off the third alcohol of our glycerol molecule, but no uh, structure coming off that second alcohol group of our glycerol molecule, and then the choline is still there. Okay, so this is what the lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase enzyme will do. It will leave this um, lysophosphatidylcholine in the membrane of the LDL, but it will take the cholesterol ester, and the cholesterol ester will then be put into the lipid core of the HDL molecule. Okay. Now, this can also happen on cell membranes. So, if you've got a cell that's got far too high levels of cholesterol in its membrane, then the HDL molecules can basically take uh, the cholesterol out of the uh, cell membrane by using a phosphatidylcholine molecule within the uh, plasma membrane uh, to perform this reaction with, and then you get a cholesterol ester which can go into uh, the lipid core of the LDL sorry, of the HDL molecule. Now, what this uh, results in is the HDL molecule getting rather more plump, okay? So what happens is you start off with these um, nascent or uh, disc-like HDL molecules because they've got nothing within their core, and you end up with a spherical or mature HDL molecule. So here now we have our mature HDL molecule, which still has its phospholipid monolayer here. It then has its apolipoproteins in its membrane, which remember is mainly apolipoprotein A1, okay? And it will then also have uh, the lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase enzyme uh, within that uh, phospholipid monolayer as well, so we'll draw this. So this is the LCAT enzyme here. But now the difference is that our core now is absolutely brimming full of cholesterol esters, which we have collected from other lipoproteins and also cell membranes. So I'll just put CE for cholesterol esters. So this is called a mature, uh, and you could call it a circular uh, HDL molecule. So mature circular HDL. Right. What then happens is the HDL will go back to the liver. So it will go back to the liver and it's going to deliver these excess cholesterol uh, molecules back to the liver. And this is why HDL is also called cholesterol. So in the media you will often hear HDL and LDL referred to as cholesterol, even though they are actually lipoproteins. And they're called cholesterol because they contain a lot of cholesterol and cholesterol esters. Okay, And LDL is called bad cholesterol because having too much of that within your blood uh, results in uh, atherosclerotic plaques being formed. Whilst HDL is called good cholesterol because that basically mops up excess cholesterol and actually stops the formation of atherosclerotic plaques. Okay, right. So here is our hepatocyte, and basically the hepatocyte has a receptor 
for uh, HDR molecules, which is known as the scavenger receptor B1. Okay, so the SR stands for scavenger receptor. Okay, and this will bind to the HDR molecules and basically the cholesterol which is collected within the HDR molecules will go into the hepatocytes and then the hepatocytes will either store it within cholesterol droplets or use it to synthesize bile acids. So basically HDL is just mopping up excess cholesterol and returning it to the liver.